Ben Habib, the former Brexit Party MEP, wrote an article pointing out some of the flaws we are seeing from this government and some of the reasons why, but of course, it misses out some important ones. You might remember the people's government being touted around, well in my opinion, it's more like the media's government, constantly worried about what the rabid left-wing lunatics called British media will think. On even the most milquetoast topics, it would be laughable if it didn't affect the country so much. Now, we have to remember, they are the Conservative Party, a mainstream political party, so real hardline stances were always going to be few and far between if they ever appeared. I had hoped they would prove me wrong, but such hope is always a foolish thing to do when it comes to politics. It will eventually corrupt all who part partake in it regardless of their political persuasions. Those with power never want to lose that power, corruption follows like you take a piss, it is that inevitable. I mean, it's even mandated into a politician's job description that he has to lie to the public, so that should tell you all you need to know about politics. There are some things we just cannot be told for whatever reason, be it for economic security or because the people would rise up against the politicians at that time. It's their and will always be there no matter what happens. Even if Labour and the Tories were no more, whoever ends up in power, the end results are the same battle to maintain that power and push their agenda which inevitably leads to corruption and general shit weasel behaviour in one form or another. Essentially, same shit, different toilet, hence why I've always said I would never join a political party or run for elected office myself. You also have to take into account no government has ever done what the people want. They do what they want and tell us what we want to hear so we tick that box. Ben Habib seems to ignore some of them facts of life but still makes some good points while also being well off the mark on others. So let's take a quick look at what he has to say. His Telegraph piece headlines, This is not the people's government, but one obsessed with being all things to all people. No, I would say it is obsessed with being all things to the media, or at least all things the media want. Instead of leading the polls, the government is enslaved by them, a symptom of its lack of vision, direction of travel and competence. Now he is right on some of that, its lack of vision, direction of travel and competence are definitely up for question at this point. But where we differ on our opinions of why is where he says leading in the polls and the government enslaved by them. The government is actually enslaved by the left wing media, I'm sure most of you would agree. There is a propensity for government to shirk responsibility and find others whom to point the finger of blame. For years, the EU offered itself up as a punch bag, but still, the Conservative-led government had to be dragged into Brexit kicking and screaming. The job has still to be properly completed, which I will actually be addressing again soon. But I do have to say, he's 100% right there in terms of government, and obviously the EU being an easy scapegoat to blame. That should end at the end of this year. More recently, it has been the turn of Quangos and the civil service who have been in the crosshairs of political blame, and notwithstanding the government's significant majority, it has thus far failed to effect any meaningful reforms. It has thus far failed to do anything of note, let's be honest here. Its failure is not born out of the difficulties associated with getting these things done, its failure is born out of its own structural problems, and its general piss poor weak behaviour when it comes to anything that might upset the media. As you know, every time the media has complained about something, the government has capitulated like the French and turned around and give them what they want. That, I'm sorry, is not public opinion as we found out last year. The media's opinion on something is usually the complete opposite to what most of the public actually think. In its pursuit of power, the Conservative Party has sought to please the broadest possible cross-section of the electorate. It has morphed into an entity which covers virtually the entire political spectrum from the left to the right. Camping more on the left to see off the Labour threat, it is also pregnant with both Brexiteers and Remainers. Consequently, it has lost any form of purpose, vision or ideology. Which, I have to say, I 100% agree with, it's not up for debate at this point. Boris Johnson has announced himself as a liberal feminist before now, so he's certainly not a hard-right prime minister, despite what the Remainers were running around screaming. 
you might have thought a party which stood for getting Brexit done would have purged itself of Remain leaning MPs at the last election after the fiasco of the previous three years. In fact, at least 136 were returned to Parliament, including the entirely discredited Theresa May. If these MPs were to act in concert, there would be sufficient in number to undermine the government's Brexit strategy, something which will not be lost on the Prime Minister. And once again, that is 100% correct and something we called out at the time of the election. Why were so many Remainers still on the ballot? But the simple answer to that is the Conservative Party is still a weak bunch of cucks at the end of the day and they needed some of those Remainers just to get in power. Because, as he said earlier, they are a broad church. At the end of the day, they are trying to encompass as many people as possible so they can get an election victory. Other Remain voting MPs who stepped down at the last election and with no notable achievements have been ennobled. Indeed, some of these even voted for the Benn Act, an act which the Prime Minister himself described as the Surrender Act. Because obviously, that is what it was, and I actually have a video coming up soon about the Lords and the bullshit that Boris Johnson has done by putting some of these Remainers in there. The problem is, the Conservative Party seeks to be all things to all people. When the Prime Minister cites One Nation Conservatism, he is not referring to its traditional interpretation of standing up for the working class. He is referring to the party's broad spectrum non-ideology. Such an approach may garner broad support at elections, but is hopeless when it comes to governance. It has robbed the government of any genuine vision, any direction of travel, and the competence to deal with crisis. Instead of leading the polls, the government is enslaved by them. The press is full of recent government U-turns. These are less U-turns than they are the government doing what it is structured to do. Follow changing public opinion. No, that is not what it is doing at all. It is following changing media opinion and the opinion of the left-wing activists as we all know. It's not people screaming from the rooftops telling the government to do this and that. It's activists on Twitter. It's then amplified by the media and Boris Johnson the cuck does what they want. It continues, that is why they apparently U-turned on the need for masks, on test and trace, on international arrivals into the UK, on school luncheons, on exam results and a whole load besides. Which is something I pointed out earlier but that's not opinion polls, that is the media pushing a bunch of bollocks, much like we see them doing before the election. It's just now we're not going to a ballot box so it's hard to prove them wrong. It is also why they did not have the courage to stand up against vandalising BLM supporters, not even after one of our nation's heroes, Winston Churchill, was attacked, was any meaningful action taken, and the Prime Minister only spoke in favour of singing Rule Britannia on the last night of the proms after public opinion was shown to be decisively in favour of doing so, which is probably the only thing he has done based on public opinion. But he only did that because the media were actually reporting on the public outrage over such a stupid move. And even then, what he said, while it was good, was still kind of weak. I'd have been out there saying a hell of a lot more if I was him. Now, like I said, it's a fairly good article. Ben Habib is on point for the most part. He's obviously forgetting that public opinion is not opinion polls. They ask like a thousand people or two thousand at most. Maybe he is stuck too much in the political bubble and actually needs to get out there and speak to some real people. The government is rarely doing what the people want. They are always caving to media pressure. That's why this is not the people's government. It is the media's government at the end of the day. And like I said earlier, I will bet with absolutely anyone right now, this shit will never change regardless of who is in charge. It is the bullshit that is politics. We're off! <laughs>